Hello! Due to popular demand, I have made this bank robbery tutorial. This is a guide on how to deal with bank robberies as a police officer. Let's start with the very basics. How a robbery works. A bank robbery occurs when a criminal gets past the vault door and right clicks the sign at the back of the vault. They can get into the vault by hacking the iron door behind the bank desk. It takes roughly 5 seconds for the door to open, and stepping on the pressure plate behind the door both closes it and sends a 911 broadcast message informing the police that someone is entering the bank vault. This is the only door that criminals can go through, and the wooden door is exclusively for police. Criminals can still shoot through both doors though. To close the iron door, you can step on the pressure plate. When doing this, be sure to inform your colleagues in 911B that you are closing the door. Once a robber clicks the sign, they must stay anywhere at the bottom of the stairs for 60 seconds. After this minute is up, they can leave the vault, but they must wait an additional 100 seconds until the money is secured. If they are arrested, killed, or knocked out before the money is secured, then they will not receive the money, and the police are victorious. In this clip, I... I mean... One Touch Dutch, the robber, accidentally steps out of the vault a second before completion, so he doesn't get any of the money because he started walking up the staircase. You'll see it right now. Oh, it doesn't announce in chat that he gets to keep the money. See how he stepped on the staircase there? No money for him. Police win. Now that we all understand the basics of how a bank robbery works, we can get into how you should play around them as a member of the VPD. Part 1. Prevention. The first thing you should know about the bank is not to hang around. Criminals are allowed to kill you at any time and begin a bank robbery without warning if it is currently robbable and there are at least three cops online. You can check if the bank is robbable by doing slash vault. If there is a cop that is distracted by something at the bank, they are vulnerable to those who wish to begin a robbery. So make sure that you stay extremely aware if you plan to be in the bank area. Refrain from arresting a suspect near the bank without a plan. Always have a vehicle nearby when you put someone in handcuffs and be ready to drive off instantly. Otherwise, this could happen to you. Scary stuff, so don't make an arrest at a bank without a getaway plan. Another important thing to keep in mind is the day slash night cycle. At night, the front door closes and the only entrance becomes the back police door. This becomes extremely easy to defend for the criminals, as they only have to worry about cops coming through one choke point door. So when the sun begins to set, it is wise to secure the bank by forcing occupants out. If anyone is uncooperative, tase them and escort them through the back door. Remember to never exit through the front door during the night. Criminals can dash through during the brief time that it is open. Sometimes, it's safer to play reactively rather than proactively. What I mean by this is that if you try to guard the bank, you will likely be caught off guard and get shot in the back of the head. But, if you aren't at the bank, then you have a much higher chance of being alive for the actual fight. In this sense, it's better to react, since it gives you a better chance. If you want to be nearby in the case that other crimes occur, patrol in a vehicle or stake out the area on an adjacent roof or treetop. In this example, I only survived because I was in a vehicle which saved me from a shotgun shot, blocking me completely, allowing me to get the tase and safely escape. Part 3. The Robbery Once it begins, tase anyone around the entrance of your choice that may shoot you in the back. Remember that all civilians must exit the bank when it is being robbed, and if they don't, consider them to be an enemy. If there are hostiles guarding the exterior, I highly recommend using lethal force, as tasing them will add an additional factor that could get you killed. If they are cuffed, they could be liberated, resulting in them rejoining the fight. Or, their taser timer of 60 seconds could simply run out while you are dealing with the robbery. For this reason, only use tasers if you have enough officers present to arrest them and respond to the robbery. After this, proceed into the bank. Make sure to let any shield units go first, as there could be crouching snipers. If you don't have any shield units to go in first, check with F5 for snipers watching the door. To get past snipers that are watching the choke point without a shield, bait their shots by running at the door and then stopping. 
After two shots, they will have to reload and you can run in. This won't always work, especially if there are two snipers holding the door. In this situation, it is always better for you to try and counter snipe, or wait for backup officers to arrive with shields to lead the way. Then you can snipe from behind their shield, or use shield bearers as cover to close the distance with a taser. After getting through the back door, clear all of your corners as criminals could be hiding anywhere. After you are certain that nobody will shoot you in the back, or if fellow officers are keeping the remaining floor criminals occupied, you can proceed to the vault. If you have a shield, you should slowly check each alcove for criminals like so. You can utilize third person mode to safely check your blind spots. You should always do this before exposing your back to a location. Everywhere that I have checked so far are extremely popular hiding spots for criminals with snipers, so make sure that you check everywhere before proceeding unless you want to get shot in the back of the head. If you see somebody hiding in one of these spots, tase them quickly, and if possible, do so without exposing yourself to their friends. In this example, Izzy Yotu spots Nalasco hiding in the Iron Door stairwell. If we didn't see him, he would have ambushed us both. Izzy tases him, but she turns her back to the vault in doing so. The other criminal could have easily taken that opportunity to shoot her. Luckily, they didn't, but we could have coordinated that better by going in back to back, facing each direction with our shields. Or, we could have backed out and went down each stairwell at the same time. Either way would have been safer to deal with the ambush, so that's what we'll do next time. If you see a shield unit clearing the vault, walk behind them and don't charge ahead of them unless they know that you are doing so. Running in front of a shield user is a quick way to get tased by accident. Walk to the side of them or jump over their heads to fire your taser. Be extremely careful to avoid friendly fire. In this example, the units not only charge ahead of me, but each other, which leads to one of them getting tased and subsequently dying. If you don't have any shield units, you should rush the vault. If you can, coordinate with teammates to rush down both doors simultaneously. Be careful not to overcrowd the vault though. Three units is plenty to deal with the threat down there, and any more might lead to friendly fire. Even if you don't have a shield unit, never run in front of an ally or you risk getting tased. Always go down in single file. If the vault is already full of police, guard the iron vault door. That's the only one that criminals can exit through, and sometimes they'll try and escape using cocaine for speed. Additionally, sometimes criminals will try to go down the vault and shoot the police from behind. If you guard their backs, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. While clearing the vault with no shield, repeat the same steps of clearing, except perform it quickly in first person, as your only defense is tasing them before they shoot you. You can still utilize third person for corners where it is safe to do so, like the staircase or in the vault. The first priority during a robbery is to stop them from keeping the money. This can be done by cuffing, knocking out, or, in necessary situations, killing the robber. If they slip past you and exit the bank, use any means necessary to stop them from keeping the money. The second priority is to get as many criminals as possible to prison. Usually, after a robbery fails, liberators will swarm and try to free their friends. Don't cuff more than one criminal at a time unless you have experience in dragging and dealing with multiple cuffed criminals simultaneously. Look for usernames in the vicinity outside of the bank, then go out of the back door and spawn a car to speed away. If there are criminals guarding the back door, hang tight and request for fellow officers to secure the area or to bring a vehicle to the front or back door. Got him, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, I got him. Alternatively, if the area is secured by your colleagues by either killing or arresting all of the liberators, you can safely move out and spawn a vehicle to take your criminals in custody to prison. But be sure to move erratically and not to stand still for too long though, as there could still be snipers. That sums up my bank robbery response tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed and possibly learned something. See you next time! 走り出せれば